So I've got Visual Studio Code open and then I've created this file. Okay. And I'm going to start writing my code. So I'm going to import a few things. Um, date time import time delta and date time. So basically here I'm not importing the whole date time module, but I'm just importing a few things that I need. And then I'm going to import time. All right. Then I'm going to print a line because I like it. And then I'm going to print little title. Then I'm going to print how the user can actually exit the program. All right. And then I'm going to print another line. All right. Then I'm going to use a try except block. And I'll show you why. So here I'm catching the keyboard interrupt exception. So actually the user won't see the error. So the traceback, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you'll see what I mean when we actually run the code. Then I'm going to write my loop. I'm going to use a while true because I just want this to run indefinitely, to loop indefinitely. And I want the user to actually exit when they want to exit. All right, so let's start with uh, dates. So date now is equal to date time dot today, which returns actually a date time object of the current date and time. And it'll have properties like year, month, etc. Then I'm going to create the timestamp for that. So date now timestamp. Now, no timestamp. All right. So basically, this method returns the Unix epoch, which is also called POSIX time or Unix timestamp, which is actually the number of seconds that have elapsed since the 1st of January 1970. All right. So I'm going to create my new year date, which is going to be a date time. So the year, which is going to be date now dot year plus one. So the next year, then the month is going to be the first, then day is going to be the first, hour will be zero, minute is going to be zero, and second is going to be zero as well. All right. Then I'm going to work out the actual timestamp. New year date dot timestamp. All right. Like that. By the way, I'm using int to convert this number to integer because this is actually a float. So I don't want that. I just want the seconds. So I'm going to convert it to integer. Then so now I'm going to work out how many seconds are left until the end of the, of the year. So time seconds. I'm going to do new year timestamp. Date now timestamp. All right. And then from this, I'm going to create a time delta. Delta the seconds, which is this. All right. So when you create a delta, only the days, the seconds, and the microseconds are actually kept. So we'll be able to actually access days and seconds and microseconds, but we don't care about them. And then you could actually print the the delta, and that would be formatted in a certain way. If you want to format it in a different way you will have to to make your own thing so we are going to do that because we don't like things if they are too easy right 
So now I'm going to get the days, time dot days, and then I'm going to get the seconds as well. So remaining time dot seconds. All right. So you've got these the days and then all the time left is stored in this as a seconds all right so you've got let's say three days and 2500 seconds okay so then i want to actually get the right amount of minutes seconds hours etc and i'm gonna do that like this So you might be wondering what div mode actually is. It's a built-in function that takes two numbers as arguments, divide the first number by the second one, and returns a pair of numbers which are actually the quotient and reminder. So I don't really want to get into math right now, but basically you have a number of seconds, you divide the number by 60, then you get let's say 45.5, and that means that you've got 45 minutes as quotient which is the first number returned by div mode and 0 0.5 minutes as a reminder, which is the second number. So 0 0.5 minutes is actually half a minute and is equal to 30 seconds. So the second number is 30. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, don't worry. I'm going to do the same for the hours. but I'm going to use the minutes. The minutes 60. All right. So we've got the remaining days, hours, minutes and seconds. Okay. Now what we need to do is try to format everything correctly and properly. Okay. So it's going to be sort of the same for all the values. So I'm going to walk you through the first and then I'm going to fast forward the whole thing because I don't want to bore you. By the way, you could do this with a function, okay? So find a way to actually use a function instead of repeat the code over and over. I just want to keep things simple, but feel free to, to experiment and try different things. So, so I'm gonna start with the days, if they actually exist. I'm going to check if it's just one day or more than one day and I'm going to print a different thing so I'm going to print days if we've got more than one day else I'm going to print actually I'm not printing anything right now but I will later all right and then if we don't have anything i'm just gonna set it to an empty string all right so now i'm just gonna copy some code to make things a little bit less boring okay so we've got days hours minutes seconds exactly the same thing for all of them all right then now i'm gonna print the whole thing okay so i'm gonna print time remaining i'm gonna use placeholders format remaining days So I'm going to do this to make things a little bit less messy. All right. 
so much better by the way as you can see here i just added a comma so that when there's actually seconds you've got the comma but if you don't have anything you don't have the comma okay so i put that in here for that reason okay now i'm just going to use the time dot sleep to stop the code from running for just one second and then i'm going to repeat the whole process over and over okay so i'm going to save the file and let's try that out hopefully it works actually there's something wrong with the theme because i've got one error here so let's have a look all right so there's a wrong indentation here probably because i actually copied the whole thing so let's fix this all right so no errors now i can actually try to run the code so i'm going to open up the new terminal run python then i'm gonna run new and let's have a look as you can see we've got 17 days 3 hours 6 minutes 37 36 etc we can exit by pressing ctrl c and as you can see no error in anything the problem with this is that we don't really want this to print in a new line every time so one two three four etc we don't really want that we just want it to stay here and update the actual string i'm gonna do that in a second i'm gonna clear this and put it down here all right we're actually gonna do that with the carrots return okay so you might ask what is the carrots return fabio hold on a second i'll get to it soon first of all i'm going to just copy this i'm gonna leave that for reference okay i'm gonna comment this out like that okay then in here i'm going to add spaces a variable with a few spaces i'll show you why in a second and then i'm going to add a placeholder here and the spaces here okay perfect so now i'm gonna place the carriage return in here which is this character because the r i could have done it like this so here and and then carriage return but i sort of like this way so i'm gonna leave it here we need also to add here at the end this because we don't want python to actually go to a new line so let's try that out hopefully we didn't make any mistake this time let's see if it works looks like it's working just fine right so you've got the time remaining is staying in the same line is not going down one line one line one line so it's sort of updating right the line and it looks really good to me by the way for this method to work really important the terminals width needs to be greater than the length of the string otherwise the string is going to be sort of cut in half half in the first line and half in the second so there would be actually two lines one line would remain and the second line would be replaced and then the same thing and the same thing and the same thing and it wouldn't work properly so i can actually show you let's stop this everything is working as you can see i'm gonna do this right a little i'm going to run it As you can see, it's not working as we would expect. If I do this, it starts working because the terminal's width is actually greater than the actual string. All right, so keep that in mind when you actually run the thing. So I'm gonna stop this. 
All right.